Hello, I'm Bob Rich, Executive Director of Placer Arts. Placer Arts is the Arts Council of Placer County, and our mission is to be a catalyst for the arts and humanities throughout Placer County, to encourage the arts, bring programs and classes and education throughout the county, and stimulate the quality of life. Hello and welcome. I'm Gia McNutt and I'm one of the 77 artists on this year's Placer Arts Studios Tour, which is one of the biggest art studios tours in the region. And today I welcome you to the third episode of our series highlighting this art studios tour. And the purpose of this is to give you an up close personal opportunity to speak with some of the artists on the tour, find out more about their art and other artists and events associated with the tour. With me today, I have three wonderful artists. I have Linda Green, Mary Tess Mayall, and Janet Nicholson. And to get started, if you would, start by letting everyone know who you are, the type of art you do, and just a little bit of your background. I'm Linda Green, and um, I am an acrylic artist. I am also work in oil, and I do some clay work as well. So. Um, I do cross between the mediums, and I do a lot of um, figurative work, but also some organic type work, too. So. Great. Uh, I'm Mary Tess Mayall. Um, I'm a mixed media artist, and I love creating work inspired by um, found photographs. So I love working with photographs from my childhood and um, from uh, friends and family photographs as well and creating new pieces of artwork from that. Um, I've shown in some local galleries, but this is my first year on the tour, Excellent. so I'm very excited. And um, yeah, excited to be here. All right, <laughs> thank you. And I'm Janet Nicholson. My husband, Rick, and I have worked as Nicholson Blown Glass now in uh, Placer County for 35 years, 37 years altogether. Um, it's a fun place to go on the tour because we'll be blowing glass. It keeps it interesting. It's definitely a fascinating process. <laughs> and this is your 23rd year on the tour, if I'm not mistaken. That's true. I've been a part of the tour since the beginning. That is so exciting. And then Mary Tess, it's your first year. Yes. Also exciting. Yes, very exciting. <laughs> and Linda, how many times have you been on the tour? Um, I've been on the tour for 15 years now. Wow, okay, so a nice long time as well. This is my third year on the tour, so. And we're glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Linda, if you would, tell us a little bit about the art that you brought with you today. Well, I did bring a little bit of everything. I have a set of cubes that I have done acrylic on, and um, it is what I call my interactive series. Uh, it's their puzzles. Um, I actually, this is one of the smaller sets. Uh, my largest set is um, each block is um, two foot square. When you stack them on top of each other, it reaches ten, uh, eight feet high. And uh, that was actually the first set I made. And uh, yeah, a little bigger than I expected. But um, this one's a little <laughs> more approachable. Uh, it has four different faces on it, four different images. And I brought a, um, a painting, which is an oil painting. And it is actually on a um, textured surface. It's a absorbent grounds I make with um, gesso and plaster. And um, it's a, kind of a process piece. Uh, it's, um, of course, originating from a shell, but it um, has, um, I've taken some opportunities with the texture. And I really like that play of you never know what you're going to get until you just dive into it and um, start exploring the nooks and crannies. And um, I also brought a small clay piece, which is also what I consider a process piece. It's, um, it has, um, it starts out as a thrown pot. And um, you come in and uh, I've carved away and added things to it. Uh, so it's, um, like I say, I never know what I'm gonna get until I start digging into it. And um, those are a little bit of a sample of the type of work I do. Wonderful. Thank you. Awesome. I love those pieces. I love that mixed media, that texture that you have on there. Thank you. It's really cool to know how you did it. 
So Mary Tess, tell us a little bit about the three pieces that you brought today. Okay, so today I brought um, a couple of little samplings of a series I'm working on. It's actually a collage series where um, I love working with um, acrylic paint and really kind of washing it out to the point where it almost looks like watercolor. Um, and then I layer some different um, found photographs on top of that. Um, I usually work in black and white. I like keeping it really nice and simple, but um, I've also been playing around with the negative space in um, each piece, um, kind of bringing out um, different lines from the different figures, like from their heads, something that they're thinking or learning um, or coming out of their feet. It's kind of like a sensory connectivity theme that I've mm -hmm. been really having fun with. Um, but I also create some bigger works of art too that'll be up in my studio. Excellent. But, um, yeah. Excellent. And Janet, tell us about this fabulous piece of glass that you've brought here today. Well, glass blowing is typically a teamwork process and my role in this is the uh, color and design. Mm. This piece is from the landscape series. We purposely put texture behind the colors to bring out the uh, feeling of uh, water and sky. And uh, this particular one is also in a sculptural metal stand that we make at the studio called the, uh, from the Volo series. So we also have a young man helping us in the studio to build the stands to fit each piece individually. Uh, my husband is the glass blower, and our daughter Hannah is his assistant right now. So as you can see, it took uh, a team to build this piece. Oh, it's just it's gorgeous. Beautiful. Just gorgeous. Thank you. Well, I'll talk about the art that I brought briefly. Uh, I've got two pieces here today. The first one that we're looking at is yet another from my trip to Europe this summer. <laughs> I've been really ex excited and having fun painting from these uh, photos I took in Europe. And uh, I've just started using a palette knife for the first time in the last couple of weeks, and I am just having a good time with that palette knife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At first it was kind of tricky, but I think you get some different textures and some different looks than when you use a brush. Um, the second piece uh, that I brought with me today is, a ser it's called Serene Autumn Pond, and I wanted to capture, I love water, and um, I love the colors in autumn. And anyway, that, the, this piece is a serenity piece. So you could in imagine yourself sitting at the dock or somewhere else and just kind of being in a, in a zen space. That was the, the idea. Nice. Yeah, well, I um, would like to talk a little bit about, uh, well, first, I want to give the dates of the tour, and then we're going to keep talking, and I'll give them again. <laughs> but the dates of the tour, in case anyone's just joining us, are November 11th, 12th, and 13th. And it's from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., 77 artists on the tour in 40 different locations. Uh, one of the things that I think is so extraordinary is the community we live in is so art-rich. In fact, uh, we had a different artist here uh, during our last segment, and she said that you know, Sonia Hamilton, very well-known watercolorist, who came from the Bay Area and basically said she got here and realized what a thriving art community this is, and she says even more so than the Bay Area. But um, we have so many great projects that have you know, come about here in our area due to the commitment to the arts here. Uh, one of them is that lovely community park that has been put together uh, with this lovely mosaic Auburn Arts Commission in charge of it. Um, just gorgeous right there. Um, gosh, how did you describe where that is? That is Lincoln Way and Lincoln Way. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah, right in the heart of Auburn, right there. Yeah, yeah. Town so, Square. Next town Square. Yeah. Yeah. Town Square. Another wonderful community project that many have uh, been able to enjoy because they're spread throughout the area are the public utility boxes that the Auburn Arts Commission once again uh, had painted. And Linda, you painted one of those boxes. Yes, I did, and that was uh, actually a really uh, neat experience because, you know, when you're out there painting and you're in the community, um, you get a lot of real positive um, feedback from people driving by, they're honking the horn, <laughs> they're waving. And, you know, I had um, people from out of town um, come and say, oh, is this some sort of um, artist community? You know, and right. so it's really brought 
um, just having those um, public art pieces um, as um, bringing a little awareness to the fact that there are artists living in our community. Um, we tend to be tucked away in nooks and crannies mm -hmm. all over um, the area, um, but um, the, the bringing the public art pieces out um, makes people aware that, that we are in the community. Yeah, so. where is your box and what is the, uh, oh my goodness. the is, image on your box so people could recognize it? Yeah, uh, mine is um, right down by the clock tower and um, it was, um, they had themes for the different boxes and mine was supposed to be um, um, commerce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. thinking, okay, what am I thinking about mm -hmm. with commerce? Well, I was <laughs> shopping, okay, so mm -hmm. I called it the shoppers and, and actually it's a little nod to my history here. I actually grew up in Auburn and I remember crossing that crosswalk right there, um, holding my mother's hand and, um, and um, going up to the shops in town. And it was a big deal to go into town. <laughs> so um, I did um, do a little nod to her and uh, just mostly, you know, from a child's perspective, you see, um, you see shoulders, hands, feet. You don't really uh, focus on the heads too much. So um, they tend, it, that's where the focus is, is the walking feet. So, um, yeah, it's I just love the that. shoppers. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, I love I've your seen box. that one. I mm -hmm. like it a lot. Yeah. And I love that child's perspective. I totally mm -hmm. got it without you even explaining mm -hmm. it. Yeah. It, it was great. <laughs> um, I was also uh, very honored to be chosen to paint a box. And as a newer artist here on the in the scene, I've just been painting for between three and four years. I have to tell you, I was petrified when, when I was going to be painting. I was excited, but I was like, oh, God. Because like, I usually don't show art to anyone until it's at a certain point because I have that childhood fear that somebody say, well, that doesn't look like a blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> but much to my delight, um, as you said, everyone who drove by was nothing but positive, and it just made me feel so happy to be doing this project that was so well-loved and supported. And uh, my box is near the fairgrounds. It's at uh, Auburn Pacific, I mean, sorry, Auburn Folsom and Pacific, and it's a fairground theme oh. since it's near the fairgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful Ferris wheel on there. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen that yeah. one too. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah. It was That's fun. Great. It was fun. I had a really good time actually. Um, <laughs> Well, I can't help but notice, uh, Janet, that you have on a lovely scarf. Um, <laughs> and so do you. Yes. yes. This, Tell us about the scarf you have on. This is created by uh, Keith Smith. He does Indonesian block printing, I believe, on these, and has studied from, with artists in Indonesia. Mm. And it's beautiful. He's on the yes, tour. He will be at the Olas building, which is uh, the old library tucked up behind downtown Auburn and there's this group of how many people in there now? Actually, oh, you know? Yes. Yes. We have five artists. Five artists and, artists and, and then we have two guest artists. So there'll be seven artists showing. All together. Oh, uh -huh. That's great. While you're at it, do you want to just mention those other artists if you have them see. on the tip of your tongue? I have them on a list in <laughs> case. my mind goes blank. Oh, um, um, San, Sandy uh, Delahanty, of course. Yes. Um, Meredith Smith. Yes. Keith Smith. I will be there. Um, Paula Amory, Paula Amory. Amory. and uh, Tian Dao, and mm -hmm. uh, we have Jeanette Peterson. Yes, and that's, that's right. When I was trying to remember the yes. jewelry. fused glass. Fused glass, and she's doing some jewelry work as well. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. lovely. So that is a great stop. Uh, there are several group locations on the tour where you can actually see several artists at once. Um, I'm at a group location, the Newcastle Packing Shed Studios and Gallery. Uh, Rick Watson and I are on the tour together there. We also have several other artists that are in that studio gallery, mm -hmm. but they're not on the tour. And I'm really happy this year that they're grouping more by region. In fact, the brochure has individual regional maps. Mm. First time in the history of the tour that they've actually done that. And so it's so large of a tour that it's impossible to see everything. So by getting into the regions, you can really focus on that. And we have about 18 artists up in the North Auburn region, too. Mm -hmm. So That's great. It is great. And, mm -hmm. and while we're at it, Mary Tess, um, have you already said where you're showing? Yeah, um, I'm showing in Granite Bay. So um, I think I'm one of uh, six artists showing in Granite Bay. And we are at um, four different locations. Um, I'll be showing my artwork from my home studio which um, is kind of tucked away right off of Auburn Folsom. And um, my home studio kind of backs up to a lake in our neighborhood, too. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So if anyone comes, they can take a little stroll around the lake. 
um, after they see my art. <laughs> and there's also um, a group of three artists showing right off of Douglas Boulevard. I think it's on Mooney Road um, at Craig Johnson's house. There's um, Marsha Toms and um, Susan, Susan Hogue. Hogue showing there. And his um, uh, house is beautiful. It has a beautiful panorama of Folsom Lake. Mm. So if you go to that studio, it'll be a great... I think that's the joy of going time. in and peeking into different yes. people's worlds that you would never see ordinarily and yeah, see their, their inspiration from their home and studio mm -hmm. and Definitely. watch people create... There'll be a lot of many demonstrations going on. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm excited to Peeking show it. into private worlds. <laughs> yes, also you get a chance to see um, how people. Um, if you're into art, you know you kind of. It's like how do they set up their studio? Um, mm -hmm. If you're a, a student, and you know, it um, seems to me when um, you go to other people's studios, they're so um, excited about their process and very willing to share. Mm -hmm. And um, it's actually a great educational venue. So it, is. it is. It is. So it's family friendly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, all definitely. ages. Yeah. <laughs> Linda, tell us a little bit about that necklace you're wearing. Oh, um, <laughs> this is actually um, a piece designed by Kathy Klein. Um, she's in the um, the um, Gomez Arts and Events Center building, and uh, this piece is um, I'm trying to, it's um, called Granite Trickle, and uh, Kathy works a lot with um, the idea of um, elements. Uh, she has a lot of pieces that reflect water. She does a lot of pieces from um, that are inspired by uh, Lake Tahoe and um, just very much into nature. Uh, she also does a few, um, a, um, enamel work, which mm -hmm. I didn't wear today, but um, it's actually quite beautiful. She um, takes, uh, it's a process Vitreous. Vitreous, thank and you. <laughs> and it, um, and it's, and what I didn't realize is after, and then I know after talking to her a little bit, is she actually, it's a multi, um, multiple firings to get mm -hmm. all those colors to come up through, and uh, it's actually quite beautiful. It is Very definitely pretty. Beautiful. I think I saw one with um, the Emerald Bay from Tahoe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. She's, um, she's downstairs, so you have to go in and find her. She's definitely a destination, um, and there's um, several artists working down in that downstairs area. This is a working studio. You can see um, all her tools, and she's just like a little smith in there tapping away on her metal work and um, and Jim Lee has and Jim Lee, Jim Lee right yes. right around the, right around the corner mm -hmm. um, his and he's um, is a um, very great at, with education um, mm -hmm. just loves to share what he does um, Candy Martin Baker is going to be showing there um, Eileen, I keep calling her the Gordon the Gordon Lady. lady. <laughs> <laughs> I, really I have uh, a piece on by Eileen, so it's oh, a uh, fortuitous time to talk about mm -hmm. Eileen. This necklace that I have on um, is called a Dreamcatcher, and it's it's by Eileen, the the, the Gordon, Gordon Lady. lady. <laughs> <laughs> but she has lovely gourds. Her creations are very unique with different items added to them. Um, <clears throat> and who else did we want to mention? I think we. Yeah, um, I'm wearing Thank some of you, Heather, Heather Scott's jewelry. Oh. Heather Scott will be showing um, at the General Gomez. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, it's amazing. She makes all of her um, jewelry. Well, first she um, uses wax um, to create the different designs, and then she um, casts those into um, one-of-a-kind jewelry. Every single piece is one-of-a-kind mm. beautiful. And this one has a little aquamarine <coughs> stone in it, too, which I love. Now she'll be upstairs. Yeah, she'll be oh, upstairs at the General Gomez. Center. So it's important to know that at the General Gomez Arts and Events Center there is a preview show yes, with a you. piece of work from Perfect. almost all of the 77 artists. So it's a good place to start your tour because you can wander through and decide who you might want to visit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Pick up your brochure. And they're having a reception on November 4th open to the public with a symphony quartet, and we have knee-deep beer and lone Yum. buffalo wine. Yum. So I'm hoping that the public will come and enjoy and decide where to go on the tour. Yeah, it's a great opportunity, 5 to 8 p.m. November That's right. 4th. Mm -hmm. And in addition, that preview show will be open from the 4th through the 17th. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, there's also another event uh, that same evening <laughs> that I would like to talk about briefly. Um, there's this, is it the evening of prisons? 
It's fundraiser. called An Evening of Prisms. There's a <clears throat> generous board member, Shauna Larson, who will also be on the tour with her African wildlife photography. <clears throat> but she wanted to have a fundraiser for Placer Arts. Separate from the tour, but kind of enhancing the tour, I guess is how you would say it. So we have probably close to about 25 silent auction items. Some people are on the tour, but a great number of them are not because we wanted to bring in other artisans from Placer County to feature. Uh, that is the Friday night of the tour, November 11th, from 5 until 10. The silent auction closes at 8. The tickets are $25. But we will also have a buy now option because the art will be up during the day, the Friday of the tour, and if you can't stay when the auction closes at 8, then you feel free to uh, purchase. Buy now. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you have idea. art at this auction, and Linda, mm -hmm. you do as well. And I don't know if we said it, you may have said it, but just to say it again, the, the beneficiary is Placer Arts, who's, who's the, the sponsor of this tour that we're, that we're all on. That's mm -hmm. correct. Yep. Yeah. So we're hoping to have a good group. Very good. Okay. Do either of any of you have any uh, hands-on experiences that you're planning to have uh, at your studio during the tour? Or yeah, giveaways? I'm excited. I'm going to have a make a painting, take a painting uh, table set up where um, I'll have lots of little um, papers or maybe even mini canvases where um, anyone can come up and paint however they would like to, and I'll have them up on a big board, and then Neat. they can take one that's already been made, or they can take theirs home, so it'll be kind of fun to Neat. see what everyone makes. Very cool. That's a fun idea. That is a fun <laughs> idea. I know a lot of people, or at least several, have a collaborative art experience or some type of hands-on experience, as well as giveaways. Many artists do drawings for things uh, to mm -hmm. the attendees who come through. I'm going to be giving away little um, succulent plants to anyone who signs Ooh. up for my monthly <laughs> newsletter. <laughs> I, have, I, I have a lot of succulents in my backyard, so I'm like, oh, these need a new home. <laughs> that's, a, that's great. So, yeah. Well, I want to mention um, that there are several other preview shows going on at this time as well, um, if the public would like to go to any of those. There's one at IQ Gallery on Midas. Actually, that one's closing, so let's uh, move on to Blue Line Arts, which uh, is open through the 21st. The Art League of Lincoln is open uh, as well. And um, gosh, uh, let's see if there's anything else we really need to hit. Definitely uh, let the public know that placerarts.org is an excellent place to get your tour guide. You can get it online, but you can also go to several locations uh, locally and get a physical tour guide as well. And it's kind of nice to get it early and be able to leave it on your coffee table and look mm -hmm. through it. And, and decide where you're going to go see. Some of the places that these are include the General Gomez Arts and Events Center, uh, Blue, Blue Line Arts, and there are several others also all on PlasterArts.org. Mm -hmm. And you can buy your ticket off of PlasterArts.org for the Evening of Prisms. Excellent. And they have a whole page that shows all of the art available for the, uh, for the tour. Excellent. Okay. Oh, and, and also the Westfield Galleria. 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 Has a, I can't has believe a I didn't say that. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yes. Show up. Right in front of uh, Pottery Barn yes. and Fabulous Restoration TV Hardware. And yeah. The Apple yeah. Store, easy to find. Gorgeous, yes. <laughs> gorgeous installation. Yeah. I would like to ask each of you uh, to maybe say a little bit about what your inspiration is for your art and maybe how you, or just, uh, how you decide to choose the colors you choose to use. Oh my goodness. Well, I, I do actually, I try to each treat each color fairly. I, I throw them all on the palette. <laughs> I waste a lot of paint because they're all there and then some of them I don't touch and I don't know why. But uh, because I'm a process artist, so um, I'll, I'll have something that I'm starting with, a thought or an idea. I, I look at things under microscopes. I, um, I pick things up off of trails on when I'm walking around. I'm looking at, you know, um, the spiraling of you know the branches on trees and um, and connecting them to shells and um, but a lot of times I'll, that'll just be a beginning and I'll put it down on a piece of you know sketch it out on the plaster and 
and then the texture of the plaster starts to take over and I'm like going, okay, what am I gonna keep and what am I gonna just let it go back into the, into the distance? So mm -hmm. um, I, I consider it's myself a process, it process is. artist all the way. You don't way. know where I you're have, going until you get no there. I have no idea and then usually I, I, have to make, I usually have to make a big old mess first and then, and then find my Fun. way out. <laughs> but it's a beautiful result. Right. Yeah, and I know, you we're, know when to stop. <laughs> we're closing in on our time here, so I would love to give you a chance to briefly answer that question, and then we'll close up with a few other facts quickly. Oh, yes, certainly. Um, my husband and I, well, he's actually from Hawaii originally, and Ooh. so we love the ocean, and that was probably our original inspiration. We started off with our Point Break Wave Bowl series, which reflected the, the wave of the ocean. But we've expanded from that, of course, living in Auburn. We um, also love the river and the nature, you know, the trees. All of that has really um, come into our choice of color. And I do the color, and that's my favorite part. And Yay. I love color, so. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. What about you, Mary Jess? Oh, I love color. And um, most of the pieces are made um, using found photographs, too. So each color really enhances Excellent. in products. So. Excellent. Yep. Well, I want to thank you all for being here today. You've given everyone a chance to find out a little bit more about the tour, some of the artists on the tour. Once again, the dates are November 11th, 12th, and 13th, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Preview show reception, November 4th, 5 to 8 p.m. Plasterarts.org is where you can go get more information. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you there. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I'd like to invite you to join us for the 23rd Annual Placer Art Studios Tour coming up November 11th through 13th. 77 artists in 40 locations from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. The artists will be in their workshops or other areas and studios showcasing their work and demonstrating what they do. We have artists doing visual arts, painting, ceramics, photography, woodwork, and much, much more. We invite you to join us again November 11th through 13th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and hopefully you'll find some pieces to take home with you. <laughs>